we've learned that whenever we have more than one force acting on an object, we draw a free body diagram. Why? Because that's what we do. We have to. We have to analyze a problem involving more than one force by counting up the forces, adding up those forces, and it's easier to do that to get the right directions, to get the right forces, if we draw a free body diagram. Let's draw a free body diagram right now. Let's draw a free body, free body diagram for a box sitting on a desk. Or sorry, sitting on a floor, let's say. There's the box. Let's say the box has a mass of 20 kilograms. Doesn't really matter for purposes of the free body diagram, because we don't have to list the mass on the free body diagram. Remember, it shows forces. But sometimes, often, in fact, we will list other givens along with it, including, say, the mass. We don't need to, but we often do, just for convenience. Let's say that box is just sitting there. Okay, it's just sitting there, not moving at all. There is a force of gravity acting down on this box. Don't know how big it is, because we don't know what the mass is. 20 kilograms? All right. Force of gravity is 20 kilograms times 9.81. 50 kilograms? Well, the force of gravity is 50 times 9.81. Regardless of its value, it acts down. What other force or forces act on this box as it sits on the floor in this room right now? Anything else? If there's nothing else, what happens to this box? Yep. It falls. It accelerates downwards. and It's in free fall. Downwards at 9.81 meters per second squared. So clearly there's got to be something else because it's not falling. It's sitting on the floor in this room right now not falling. What other force acts? What other force or forces act? Yep. The normal force. Good. In which way does the normal force act? Good, it acts upwards. Tell me when to stop drawing the normal force here, okay? See, yeah, about like that. Yeah, that might not be exactly the same length as the force of gravity, but if I measured it with a ruler or measured with a ruler as I was drawing it, we could probably get the same length. It should be approximately the same length because it's the same value. Any other forces acting on the box? No, nope, probably not. Probably not if the box is just sitting there. Okay, let me change the question a little bit. What if the box is moving now? Okay, what if the box is accelerating? It's speeding up, but yet there's friction acting on it at the same time. It's speeding up to the right side of the room, okay, over here towards Curtis. But there's friction all at the same time. We would draw an applied force to the right. We'll call it FA. We don't know how it compares in value to the normal force from gravity, so it doesn't really matter how long you draw it. We would draw a friction force which way? Which, which way does friction act if the applied force is to the right? The opposite way. It's going to act to the left, right? How big should I draw the friction force? Longer, shorter, or the same size as the applied force? Remember, it's being pushed to the right, and it's speeding up. But there is friction acting. Yeah. We should draw it shorter. The friction force has got to be smaller in value than the applied force, because otherwise it wouldn't speed up as it was being pushed. All right? Let's change the question again. Let's say this time this box is on the same surface, is being pushed to the right, but as it's being pushed to the right, it's slowing down to the right. Can that happen? Can you push something in one direction, but it's slowing down in that direction? Sure, sure it can. You're driving your car. Normally, when you drive your car and put your foot on the brake, you're supposed to take your right foot off the gas pedal and put your right foot on the brake pedal. The idea of that is to prevent you from having your foot on the gas pedal and the brake pedal all at the same time, right? Right? Make sense? Maybe you don't do that, though. Maybe you put your left foot on the brake pedal, and maybe you get your foot on the gas pedal and your foot on the brake pedal at the same time. What happens? Well, you still have an applied force pushing you forward by the engine. But maybe you're pushing on the brake pretty hard, so you start slowing down a little bit. Now you've got two forces, an applied force and a force of friction, but you're slowing down. Let's draw the applied force forwards. Tell me when to stop drawing the force of friction. Remember, you're moving forwards, but you're slowing down forwards. Tell me when to stop drawing the force of friction line. Oh, this is going to happen again, isn't it? Let's stop there. We could have stopped way back, 
All we know is that the force of friction has got to be bigger than the applied force, right? If it's slowing down, friction is going to be bigger than the applied force. One more. Actually, let's go back to this page. And let's, let's actually take away um, that force, make it a little bit shorter here. There we go. One more. Let's say that this time, this time this box is traveling at a constant speed. Gravity is acting. Normal force is acting. It should be roughly the same length. The applied force is acting to the right. I'm pushing it to the right. But there's friction acting as well. But it's traveling at a constant speed. How big should the value of friction be? Well, let me draw it in. Tell me when to stop. Good. Right there, right? Force of friction should be the same value as the applied force. Because if it was bigger, it would slow down. If it was smaller, it would speed up. People are going to say, wait, friction is the same value as the applied force. It should slow down and stop, shouldn't it? No, because the forces are balanced. If it's at rest and the forces are balanced, it's going to stay at rest. But if it's moving and the forces are balanced, it's going to stay moving at a constant speed in a straight line until the forces are unbalanced. That's Newton's first law. All right. Now, in all three of these cases, you can see that the normal force cancels out with the force of gravity. That's good. Okay, that's good. That makes life easier for us. Now, to analyze any of these three problems, we would follow our next step, which says F net is equal to the sum of the forces. That's FF plus FA, all of the forces added together. And if we were looking for the acceleration, we might even say MA is equal to the force of friction plus the acceleration. Force of friction would be negative. The, the uh, force applied would be positive. The one exception to that would be this one. When it's going at a constant speed or it's at rest, the normal, sorry, the applied force and the force of friction cancel each other out. So how do you analyze that? You're left with no forces. What's the net force when all the forces have canceled out? Zero. What's the acceleration when all the forces have canceled out? Zero. There's nothing to analyze. If they all cancel out, you're done. There's nothing to do. If they don't all cancel out, then let's go to this step, which says net force is equal to the sum of the forces. Right, Zach? All right. You guys had uh, a number of homework questions last night. The first one being based directly on what we just have talked about. It's that bobsled, bobsled question that we found in our textbook on page 150. Let's read the first paragraph here. It says, in the men's four-man bobsled event at the Winter Olympics, the maximum mass of a bobsled with two riders, a pilot, and a brake man is 630 kilograms. They're not telling me in that question that the mass that I use is 630 kilograms. They're telling me that the rule says this is the most mass you can have. It doesn't mean that's the mass we actually have. Maybe these guys... Uh, just get under the wire at 629 kilograms. Maybe the guys are lighter and the total mass is 615 kilograms. Maybe the sled's really light and the mass of the four guys in the sled is 612 kilograms. We don't know what the mass is total right now. We just know that the total maximum mass is 630 kilograms. Okay? That's not the mass we use. I'll give you another example to help explain that. You get into an elevator. You look at the uh, buttons, and somewhere by those buttons, it'll give you a maximum capacity. Say maximum capacity, 19 people. Okay. Maximum capacity, 600 kilograms, whatever the case may be, right? You ever see that, guys? That doesn't mean there is 19 people in the elevator and that the mass of everybody in the elevator is 630 kilograms or 600 kilograms, whatever I said. It just means that that's the most you can have. If we're analyzing the motion of that elevator, we're not going to use the mass of what we're allowed to put in that elevator. We're going to use the mass of the elevator itself with the people that are actually inside it, right? Same deal here. So basically, we're saying the 630 kilograms doesn't matter. All right. 
During a practice run, riders A and B exert forces of 1220 and 1200 newtons, respectively, on the bobsled. Here's the bobsled. Uh, we've got a force caused by person A, and its value is 1220 kilograms. Sorry, 1220 newtons. We've got a force caused by person B that's 1200 newtons. Maybe it should be a little bit longer, but it doesn't really matter. It's close, close enough. Now, the reality is these guys are probably pushing this bobsled as opposed to pulling it by ropes. That may not be the most efficient way of pulling a bobsled and getting it going down the track is by pulling it by ropes. But it doesn't matter which way I draw it, right? Are they pulling it? Are they pushing it? Who cares? A force is a force. This is good. I've also, by the way, got gravity and a normal force, but they cancel each other out. I've also got a force of friction of 430 newtons. What's actually which way? Yep, acts to the left. It's going to be a small force. We got a mass here that might as well label somewhere. What is it? 255. How many guys are in this sled right now? Two. Now the two guys are pushing. It's a four-man bobsled, but two guys got to push right now. What's the mass? Not 630 because it's the most you can have when you have the sled and the two guys, the four guys in. We've got the sled and two guys in right now. The total mass that we're going to use here is 255 plus 97 plus 98, which is, uh, what is that, uh, 450? All right, good news. The up and the down force canceled leaves us with three forces acting on just the x-axis. That's going to be FF plus FA plus FB. You can call these whatever forces you want. That's just what I've called them. Now, we're looking for the acceleration, so we're going to say M times A is equal to those three forces. I don't even care if you skip that first step. Okay, I don't care if you even put that, that uh, phrase in there. It's good. I do, and I always will. But in the end, if you go next to this one, that's good enough. Total mass here, 450. Acceleration is what we're looking for. FF is going to be 630. FA is going to be 1200, or 1220, I should say, plus 1200 for FB. Is that right? Is that right? No, it's not. What's wrong with that, Adam? What is? Uh, I think it's 630, isn't it? No, it's 430, you're right. Okay, good, you're right. The 430 should be a negative value. Or you could alternatively say that's a positive value, but if you did that, then the other two would have to be negative. It doesn't really matter. All right, we do the math there. Okay, neg 430 plus 1220 plus 1200. Divide that number by 450, and when we do that, we should get 4.4 meters per second squared. And it's a positive value, so it means it's accelerating forward. Boy, it wouldn't be a very good, these guys wouldn't be very good uh, um, bobsled pushers if you ended up getting a negative value there, right? It was accelerating in the wrong direction. You know it's going to be positive. That's a check, right? You do a question, and you end up getting a negative answer. That's OK. You made a mistake. Understand that you made a mistake and fix the mistake. Go back and find your mistake and fix it. Right? We're good there? Listen, I can't overemphasize the importance of what we're doing right now. Okay, it is arguably the single most important thing that we do in Physics 20 and Physics 30. You will not see a problem involving a bobsled like this in Physics 30. I promise you that. But you will see problems involving electric charges and magnetic fields. And when you're trying to solve for a net force or an acceleration, it boils down to the same thing. It boils down to draw a free body diagram showing all of the forces, the electric force, the magnetic force, the gravitational force. Add them up, solve for the net force, or solve for the acceleration. Okay, if we can do this now, okay, and that sets us up well for a good part of Physics 30. Yeah. All right, let's try our other questions now that we have for homework that are a little bit more general in nature than that one question. 
Page 136, number 1 to 4 and 8.